Rich Basacci has had a chance this year, 12 games in the regular season, one in the postseason, to show what he can do. There's a feeling within the locker room that they want Basacci to be the guy. Here he is from today asking if he's had conversations with team owner Mark Davis about the possibility of Basaccia winning the permanent job. Uh, Mark and I have, have had some conversations. Uh, there's due process. He has to interview um, some other candidates, as I, I, I well know. Um, I'm very respectful of the process, um, what it's supposed to look like and how it's supposed to work. And uh, I think we'll be in con constant conversation, and we'll certainly talk again before the week is over. Uh Hey, Rich, it's Tashawn Ray from The Athletic. Um, obviously, you know, you didn't expect to be, you know, in, in a head coaching role coming into this season. Uh, what, did, what did you learn just from that overall experience uh, just about yourself as a coach and, and how did you kind of grow um, throughout this experience uh, during the season? Yeah, wow. Um, I, I've just, um, I guess I learned that um, I, I could do the job. You know, I, I learned that I could... Um, have conversations with other coaches uh, to figure out how to possibly win a game or, and um, still uh, keep the same role that I had where you can uh, build relationship with players um, and still do the job that I started off with. So um, I, I can see now how offensive coordinators can get a head job and still call plays and defense coordinators get a head job and still call plays. So um, I, I, I kind of learned that uh, about myself as well. So I'll leave it at that. And he leaves his resume at 7-5 and five in the regular season with a playoff game. And the sense on Saturday was he keeps it close or wins at Cincinnati. He may end up with the job. Well, Mike, he kept it close. He kept it close. Nothing to be ashamed of. And I just think the fact that you got so many people in that organization that want him, it makes it awkward, to say the least, for the next guy to come in. I don't know that I would want that job right now. I don't know that I want to follow the guy that everybody wants, puts more pressure on me as his replacement to get everyone on the same page right out of the gates. You know, there, there's a couple of ways to go. How much do you listen to players in this? The players love the guy. I mean, he, he's a very well-liked coach. But then also, in the next year or two, how many of those players are even going to be there? We know what the turnover rate is in the NFL. But, I, you know, given all that went on there, he really, I thought he did a good job to close the season with the four wins to get to the playoffs. And then again, while I thought Cincinnati definitely outplayed them, they were right there. They kept great drive at the end of the half to get within, within a score, and then they kept it close in the second half. They really got screwed a bit on the inadvertent whistle. That play should have been dead on one of the Cincinnati touchdowns um, that, that, that didn't, didn't help them, obviously. So sometimes, Mike, the decision can be so easy you don't make it, where it's right in front of you and you think you need to go get somebody who you think is going to be better or a bigger name when maybe you just kind of keep flowing with Rich and going, he has the you know the backing of the players. It's a team that has a lot of talent, certainly needs some pieces to fill and see where you can go. But again, sometimes I, 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 you sit there and you say, well, we, maybe we should just keep them. And you almost outthink yourself thinking that you should be trying to find somebody better. Hey, you put it best last Monday that same way, and I gave you credit for it so many times last week. If you had a nickel for every time that I had said it, you'd probably have about 45 cents. But still, that's 45 <laughs> cents for doing nothing. But you said it, and it was great. The morning after that epic Raiders-Chargers game, sometimes the answer is right in front of your face. And with Mark Davis, and this is, this is one of the things I love about the NFL, multi-billion dollar organizations from a football perspective run by a monarchy where how did I end up getting the team? Well, my dad bought it. My dad was the owner, and when he died, I got it. Well, what qualifications do you otherwise have to own and operate an NFL team? Absolutely none. Thank you very much. Now let me get back to my football team. And, and that, that creates an element of unpredictability in all this. On top of everything else, Mike, the Raiders have requested permission to speak to Gerard Mayo, the Patriots inside linebackers coach. Good. Hey, doing your search. Got to yeah, do your search. Yeah. They've also requested permission to speak to Dave Ziegler from the Patriots front office and Ed Dodds, the assistant GM of the Indianapolis Colts. Now, the last time I checked, yeah. Mike Mayock's still the general manager. So I don't know what this is. I don't know if Mark Davis has kind of discovered plutonium by accident here where teams will actually begin interviewing coaches before deciding to keep the coach they have. Are you kidding me? Unless Mike Mayock's secretly been fired and we've sent the Raiders 
PR department a request for explanation here, and I've asked the NFL, what's this all about? You can go out and just interview guys when you still have your general manager. You didn't fire Mike Mayock. He's there. He's not the interim guy. So this is just some of the stuff that you get sometimes when you're dealing with an NFL team run by a guy who has done and will do some unpredictable things, Mike. Well, listen, we know the Davis family has always been a hands-on family. I mean, so that's not shocking at all. So I would hope, Mike, in this situation, and again, we don't know, that Mark and Mike Mayock have had some kind of discussion. If they haven't, shame on Mark. I mean, you, you've got to, and again, I don't know. I'm hoping, I, I'm such a big fan of communication. It really works when you sit down and talk to somebody, at least know what page everybody's on going forward, because you're right. When all of a sudden you're talking to management personnel and you have a management person in place already, what's going on? So I really hope Mark and Mike have had a sit down and a discussion on what direction they're going to know. So Mike isn't just kind of flailing in the wind. And then they're going to make a decision on a coach before they know what they're doing with the general manager if it's not going to be Mike. Yeah, it, it really is a strange situation. And I know, look, Mayock was the guy that was hired by Gruden. So Gruden's gone. So maybe Mark Davis is just saying, I got to take a step back and I got to evaluate right. everything. And maybe he wants to keep a bird in the hand. Maybe that's it. Maybe I want to I reserve the right to keep Mike Mayock as my general manager, but I want to see who else is out there. Because if I change coaches, I may have to change general managers. New coach may want a new GM. And if I want to have a team that's going to work well together, I want to do that. So uh, regardless, it would be helpful for Mark Davis to at least let everyone know what he's thinking of because it's confusing when these things just kind of happen. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.